Hey guys, so today we're gonna go over this question. We're gonna do the process um, mining uh, topic and we're gonna go over the alpha algorithm. Okay, so we're gonna solve this question. Uh, so this trace is really long, both of them. So we have three traces, A to F and then B, D, C, E, G. You can see also the traces here. Anyway, so we're gonna go over this with the alpha algorithm. So first, we can write all the events, so it's A to G. And then we go over all the optional starting events. We just look on the first one. So the first one in all the traces is A. Then we look at all the end events, possible end events. So we can see G is the last one, G is the last one, G is the last one. So the only one which is possible is G. Then we need to create the footprint semantics. So in order to do that, we're gonna look at all the relationship where X is bigger than Y. So what does it mean? Where we have an event X, where X uh, in time T, and we have another event Y in time T plus one. So this is what it means. Meaning, for example, A, comma B, meaning there is A and after that B, okay? So first we have A and then B, then B, then C. We can see it here. C, then D. We can see that here. And then uh, we have e, e, comma, F, which we have here. And then we have f comma b which we can see here and then we see b comma d you can see here then d comma c which we see here okay then c comma e and then we we go over e comma g you can see here and then Okay, I'm looking and the other choices A comma B is already written. Uh, B comma D. Do we have it? Yeah, it's already written. Now D comma C already written. C comma E already written. E comma G already written. So this trace is also good and this one I'll already go over it. A comma B already written. B comma C written. D comma E where is it? Here. So F comma B. Here. And F comma B. No, C comma D. We have it somewhere. Here. D comma E. D comma. D and then E. One second. Let's find it. Ah, here. And then E, F is here, B, then D, we have here, and C, then E, we have here, and E and then G, we have here. So this is all where it's bigger. Now we're gonna look at transitive relation, meaning we have X bigger than Y, but we cannot see Y bigger than X, okay? So we can see it on A, B, A, B, C, F, B, B, D, C, E, E, G, E, F, and D, E. Why can't we see it on C, D? Because there is exists D and then C. Okay, so we can see B and then C. Um, sorry, on D. C and then D. And we can also find D and then C. Okay? This is why. So this means that they are parallel, meaning they can happen at the same time basically. So now we're going to fill up the footprint matrix. So really easily, we can always just mark here the diagonal. This means no relations between them. So it doesn't matter if uh, th there is no x bigger than y or y bigger than x. So there is no this relation. So I assume we know it. And now we start filling it with the transitive, so here, okay? So let's do it slowly. A go over B and then B and A are having the opposite, so B and C. So B here and C here, 
so we have to mark the same here so and then we have c and d so c and d is here and d and c is here so c and d d and c then f and b so f is here and b okay so f goes to b but we have to mark the same thing but opposite here okay um and now we have here we are in b and d b and d so here and then d to b have to be the opposite then we have d to c d to c this is d this is c um sorry i didn't look at the right uh, line so we did this now c and e okay so c and e is here c and e and now e and c so it's here and now we are here e and g e is here and g is at the end so now e and f e and f is here so i mark also this one just the opposite direction e and f and now d and e so d is here e and we mark all of them now we're gonna mark the parallel relation so c and d c and d sorry i mark this by mistake it's supposed to be like this and of course all the rest is there is just no relation okay so i already did that and created the table so you can see it's the same table i just already feel it so okay so we start here now after we have this table what we're gonna do after we created the footprint matrix we create all the subsets okay so how do we do it we go over a first okay we start line by line and then say okay a goes to b so we transitive to b okay so we write it is it any other one no so now b is b transitive to anyone else yes yeah, c and d so write b and c and b and d okay b to c and b to d now c this line c only transitive to e so c can only be after e and then d uh we look at that and we see only to e also so d is all only to e okay now new line e is to f and g so we can sit here e to f and e to g and this is was by mistake sorry uh was a mistake to write it anyway so e to f and g so we saw it here and then f to b okay we can see it here and that's it so now we can group some together how do we group them together so first i group b c and d how do they know how to do it so what i did was looking at b and looking okay there is c and there is d and how did i know to group them if c and d does not have a relationship between themselves so i go to c and d uh position so c and d is here and i see they are right c and d yeah so i see they're parallel and then i know they can happen at the same time okay so i go to b and i see hey i can do them at the same time okay there are some people who don't like to write this especially because they are parallel so you can delete it uh, if you want to i will do it just for you but anyway so next uh e f and g 
uh, how did I know how to group them? So I went to E and then I saw, okay, E follows the F and G. And then I look at F and G uh, intersection to see if they have any relation. I see F and G, this is F and F, this is F and G, okay? So E and F and G. And now I look at the intersection, they don't have any relation, okay? So I know how to group them. And A and F and B, how did I know? So what I did was starting going by each column and looking at the transitive. So I went through here. Um, and what I saw is, okay, what uh, does get us B? So here in B, what does get us B? A and F. Now I look at A and F intersection and see if they have any relations. Look, remember we only can have no relation. Okay, so A and F is here. They have no relation, so I can group them together. Okay, and then I look at C. I see uh, that only B it can get a C. And then I look at D. I can only see that only B get a C. And then E, we get C and D can get us E but C and D have a relation, okay? So they have the parallel relation, okay? So just to note, and then I look at E uh, and I try to see if anything can get us E with a relation. We saw that no, and then F and then G, okay? So this is what we get. Okay, just guys, just to note, I added the now that we cannot do this, we cannot group them together, B, C, and D, uh, just because they have relations of parallelism. So we have to delete it. And now we take only the maximum set. So why did I delete this one? Uh, because A to B is already included here. Okay, so we don't need both of them. Okay, uh, so we can delete this one, this one, uh, this one we cannot delete, sorry. And one second, sorry. We cannot delete this one. I'm oh, sorry. Anyway, so we cannot delete this one and we cannot delete this one. Okay. Huh. Long video. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so we have this one and we can also delete F to B because we already have it here. And that's it, so now let's start building the Petri-Net. So I already build it, but if you want in the later video, I can also build it with you. But how did I know how to do it? So first of all, we have the start option. So we always start and then A, okay? Because this is the starting. And the end is always G, we also knew it. So now what we're gonna do? So we have, we know that we have A, and and then b okay so we have to have a transition to b but i knew to also had an option that to f because that mean either a or f can cause b so there is an xor here between them so this what happened and now we go over b okay let me see okay uh, where does B appear? B can have either after it C or after it D, meaning there is parallelism. We can also see it that between B and C there is parallelism. Okay, so note that. So after B, we do both of them at the same time, so it's end, and then we have C and D, which you can see here, and then what we see is after C and D, there is always, after C and D, there is always E. Okay, so here is D, where is the C? Okay, so we know that both of them have to occur in order to have E. You can see it also by checking that, you know, there are never an occurrence that we have E and we don't have B and C, okay, uh, sorry, C and D. Okay, and so this is end, 
okay? Both of them have to happen, and then I look at E, okay? So we see that E can either cause us to go straight to G, or it can cause us to go to F. So I know that I have to have a split here, and there is no reason for F7. I'm sorry that I wrote it. Okay. So we know we have uh, an option, XOR option. Either we go straight to G and we are done, or we're going back to F, which take us back to B, and we go over this. Okay, so it was a long video, hard video. Please like and subscribe. I know it was hard. I know I got some things confused. Hope you like it, and uh, see you next time.